Hi, it's Minister Tara again, back with you for our Selah moment. I hope you're being blessed as we speak about unwavering faith. Let's pray and we're going to discuss today that unwavering faith getting fueled up and our journey with the Lord. We thank you, Father, for another opportunity for Selah to come together. We pray by the power of your Holy Spirit, minister to the hearer today and the one who's receiving this word that's viewing, that's listening. God, minister in a way as only by your spirit you can. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I spoke to you on our last Selah moment about this unwavering faith, being fueled in our faith. One of the things that struck me in my research about fuel is that there are all types of fuel. I mean, it, it was names I have never heard before. As many types of fuel, it's required for certain kinds of vehicles, whether it's diesel or regular ga gas, ethanol. I mean, just going to all of these multiple names, some of them are used for particular types of vehicles and ways that we are able to be transported from one place to the next place. Well, I wanna go back into the types of fuel that we have that ignite our faith. We all live by faith, all of us. You live by faith. The question is, who do you place your faith in or what do you place your faith in? As a disciple and apprentice of Jesus, we desire to place our faith in him because faith really shapes who you are. And so this faith that we need to live it out in a way that glorifies God and for us to live in purpose and for us to meet the trials of life that we will meet, we need to be fueled up in our faith Today, last week we talked about prayer and Bible study. Today, I want us to look at worship, generosity, and service. And let's start with worship because Romans chapter 12 tells us very, very clearly in verse 1, the Apostle Paul writes, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies, how? A living sacrifice holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed, how? how? By the renewing of your mind, that you may be able to prove that which is the acceptable, the perfect will of God. How do we live a life of worship? Let me make this real clear. You probably already know this, but oftentimes when we come to church and we hear a song set, we think, oh, we, because we call it worship and praise. No, that is a song set that is worshiping and praising God. But living a life worshiping is really about living a life of worship. When you and I live that life of worship, it fuels our faith. Here's the deal, because we're all worshiping something. Whatever you lift up, whatever you attach to, whatever you give great admiration to, whatever it is that you feel like you have to need to live, that you feel like you just can't make it without, it's an act of worship. When people go to concerts, all of these stars and that we see on TV and all the fame and all of that, they're worshiped by so many people that they pay thousands of dollars to hear them sing or to see them perform. We're worshiping. The question is, who do we worship? If you and I on a daily basis, if our attention is not focused on worshiping the living God, then we're not going to be fueled in our faith. He calls us to worship him. When he met the woman in John chapter four, he spoke to her about worship. When they began to talk about worship, she spoke about a mountain, but he said, no, the worship is in spirit and in truth. In spirit, the spirit of the living God empowers us to worship the one true living God, the truth of who he is, who he wants to be in our life, the character of God. If you and I are not getting fueled in Bible study to know who God is, if we're not spending time in prayer to pray and commune with him, how do we worship him on a daily basis? How is he worshiped in our life? I said this to someone recently, and perhaps this may cause you to put some comments in the chat section. There's a whole lot on social media about self-care, taking care of self, taking care of self. We focus so inward on ourselves, and there's nothing wrong with loving yourself, taking care of yourself. But the truth is, you don't even know how to take care of yourself. You don't even know what self needs. 
But if I'm worshiping the living God when I'm tired and I'm worn out, when things are happening, I may think I need a massage, but as I'm spending time with God and my focus is worshiping him, he may say to me, no child, what you really need to do is pull away and just have some quiet time with me. Worship, just spend some time. Focus in, let me shift your gaze and your perspective. And we find that even in that moment of self needing to be refueled and revitalized, it's done in a way that Christ fills me, not something that I'm striving to make myself feel better on my own. He calls us to worship him. The spiritual discipline of worship also comes from a posture of gratitude. I can worship God when it, I'm, I'm grateful. Practicing gratitude every single morning, just and, and throughout the day, Lord, thank you. Thank you that you have provided in this area. Thank you, Lord, that I, I'm able to go to work. Thank you for my children. Thank you for my spouse. Thank you for the trials that I know you're going to bring me through. Thank you as I reflect back on my yesterday. You were good to me on yesterday that you brought me through trouble, that you brought me through tribulation that you sustain me. How, how do you practice gratitude? Gratitude leads me to fuel my faith and to worship and set my attention on the one who fulfills, the one who hand satisfies every living thing. Again, this is how our faith is fueled because my worship is up towards him. My gaze is towards him. My heart is centered towards him. I'm worshiping him, which helps me to shift my focus from everything else that is not meaningful. And that I guarantee you, your faith will be fuel. Remember, Bible study, we're in the word of God. We're praying, we're seeking the Lord and we're worshiping him. You will see when you worship him, he is so much bigger than your problem. He is so much greater than the circumstance. It doesn't mean that it's not painful. It doesn't mean that the diagnosis isn't there, but your mouth will begin to say, God is greater. God is bigger. God is my sustainer. God is the promise keeper. Father, help us today to worship you. And remember, it's not a three song set. It's not a four song set. It's not our favorite song that we hear on the radio. It's not our favorite song on our phone or, uh, that we play in the car. It's, it's not. It's our lifestyle, how we live. As the Apostle Paul admonishes us in Romans that we would present our bodies. It's what we do with our bodies. It's how I'm living out my life. We present our bodies unto you. That's the sacrifice that we say, Lord, I'm yours, and here I am to set my focus and my attention, my gaze on you. Help us to do that, to worship you, and help us to see just how much that fuels our faith, shuts down our doubt, and shifts our gaze towards the one who is worthy of praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Until our next time together, Selah.